Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Lauren. Good afternoon, Mom Arby. November indeed is a much awaited month for our language enthusiasts and book lovers. Don't you agree, ma'am? Yes, Mom Arby. Right? So on behalf of the Governor PF Spiritual Elementary School family, and in celebration of the National Reading Month program with the theme of Bawat Bata Umabasa sa Kabila ng Hamon ng Pandemia, welcomes you and uh, with much pleasure and honor to join our program. Okay, so to start the program, let us have first our prayer to be led by Dana Libron M. Abrazado, a great poor pupil. And to be followed by the singing of national anthem, pledge of allegiance, and bakor hymn through audiovisual presentation. Ilagay po natin ang ating presensya sa Panginoon. Panginoong naming mahal, nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong paggabay sa araw-araw. Ngayong araw pong ito ay ipinagdiriwang namin ang buwan ng pagbasa. Hinihiling po namin ang iyong gabay upang maging maayos at matagumpay po ang aming program. Ganon din po ang paggabay sa bawat mag-aaral Puro mga magulang, alumni at kawani ng barangay na nakikip isa sa aming programa. Ipinataas na namin ito sa pangalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Sabay-sabay nating bigkasin ang panunumpa ng katapatan sa watawat ng Pilipinas. Ako ay Pilipino, buong katapatang nanunumpa sa watawat ng Pilipinas. At si bansang kanyang sinasagisag na may dangal, katarungan at kalayaan na pinakikilos ng sambayanang makajos, makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. Bilis sa gawain Sa kasipagan Kaagapay kaunlaran Sa bakor aasenso ulat Pang buhay mo Kung masipag lang Mga tahong masing talaga At iba pang lamang dagat Kakanin sa balsa Halo-halong basa Sa 
Reading takes us to new places and dimensions. Reading allows us to communicate effectively with others. Reading then is a key to our future. Thank you to all that contribute in making this Reading Month celebration truly a success event. Have a good day and enjoy watching. Thank you so much, Mom, for that wonderful message. A family that reads together grows together. And with that, the GPMPS family would like to show you some videos of our Dear pupils and parents, as they read together. This is Teacher Onins, and I will be reciting a declamation piece entitled, Bad Girl. Hey, everybody seems to be staring at me. You, you, all of you, how dare you stare at me? Why? Is it because I'm a bad girl? Naglakad si Bibi, nasa lubong niya si Manok. Kayo ba ang nanay ko? Tanong ni Bibi. Hindi ako ang nanay mo. Sagot ni Manok. The Fox and the Woodcutter Some hunters were chasing a fox. The fox saw a woodcutter and asked him for help. Please hide me, kind woodcutter, the fox said. The woodcutter told the fox to go into his house. Soon, the hunters came. They asked the woodcutter, Did you see a fox? To give us the guidelines and mechanics, may I call on Ms. Eileen C. Chavez, a grade 5 teacher. The best performance 
from each grade level will be included in the FB live stream on November 29, 2021 at 2 o'clock p.m. All participants will be given certificate of participation and all the winners will receive medals. A just decision is final. And for the criteria for judging, 25% pronunciation, 20% voice variations and projection, 20% content and logical presentation of events, 25% skills and eliciting emotions and expressions of the character played. 10% for costumes and props and a total of 100%. Thank you. And now, let us witness the presentation of different activities and showcasing the best performance of every grade level in English and in Filipino. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Maria P.T. Duay. Nasunong may tangang ay sa siyas. Samahan po ninyo ako sa aking kwento na kapupulutan ng aral. Ang kwento po natin ngayon ay pinamagatang silanggang at ipaklong. Maganda ang panahon, mainit ang sikat ang araw. Maaga pa lamang ay gising na silanggang. Nagluto siya at kumain. Pagkatapos, kumakan niya siya. Daya ng bati, hinghanap siya ng pagkain. Isang buti lang bigas ang nakita niya. Pinasa niya ito at binala sa kanyang bahay. Nakita siya ni Tipaklong. Mugundong mogo kay Bigong Lunggong. Bati ni Tipaklong. Ay bigot ng mundala. Bakit kaula ko nung ginawa kong dumaganap at nag-ipon ang pagkain? Oo nga! Nag-ipon ako na sa pagkain para maganda ang panahon! Sagot niya ng gam. Tumul ko sa akin kay Bigong Lunggong. Bika ni Tipaklong. Habang maganda ang panahon, tayo magsiya. Halika, tayo lumuksa. Tayo kumanta. Ikaw na lang, baby gang Tipaklong. Sagot ni Langgam. Dahil nga sinabi ko sa'yo, habang maganda ang panahon, ako ay maghanap ng pagkain. Ito ay ako ay niipunin para ako ay may makain pag sumama ang panahon. Lumipas pang maraming araw, lumating ang tagulan. Ulan sa umaga, ulan sa hapon, at sa gabi ang umuulan pa rin. At dumating ang panahon, kumiglat, kumukulog, at lumalakas ang hangin, kasabay ng pagwos ng malakas na ulan. Ginaw na ginaw, at gutom na gutom ang kawawang tipaklong. Naalala niyang punta ng kaibigan silang gam. Paglipas ng padyo, pinilit ni tipaklong na marting ang bahay nila gam. Bahagyan siya maklukso, wala nang dating sigla ng siyahing si Tipaklong. Tok, 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 lumukas ang pinto. Apa! Ang aking kaibigan! Bila ni Langgam. Tuloy ka, halika, at maupo. Binigyan ni Langgam ng tayong damit si Tipaklong. Saka mabilis na ang kahanda siya ng pagkain. Ilang pang santali at magsalang kumain ng mainit na pagkain ng magkaibigan. Salamat kay Bigong Lunggong. Wika ni Tipaklong. May lakoy na niwala sa'yo. Kailangan nga para magbupon habang magandang panahon at nang may makain ang dating yung tagutom. Mula noon, nagbaga si Tipaklong. Pagdating ng pagdirit at habang magandang panahon, iksama na siya ng kanyang kaibigan si Langgam. Natuto siyang gumawa at natuto siyang mag-impok. At diyan ang tatapos ang aking kwento. Laging natin tandaan ang halika ang pag-iimpok. Upang sa oras ng pangalan, tayo ay may matudukot. Ang Batang Makalat ni Lorraine G. Lelis Si Lota ay isang batang makalat. Tuwing kumakain siya, ay itinatapon lamang niya ang kanyang pinagainan kahit saan. Sa tuwing si nanay naman ay naglilinis ang bahay, hindi siya tumutulong para mapabilis ang gawain nito. Palagi lamang siyang naglalaro ng kanyang mga manika at pagkatapos ay iiwanan na lamang niya 
ang mga ito kung saan saan. Naging ugali na ni Lota ang pagiging makalat. Kahit palagi siyang pinapangaralan ng kanyang mga magulang ay hindi siya makikinig. Isang araw, habang siya ay kumakain ng saging, itinapon niya ang balat nito sa sahig. Maya-maya pa ay nakita niyang nadulas ang kanyang nanay dahil dito. Dali-dali siyang tumakbo palapit sa kanyang nanay. Mabuti na lamang at agad niya itong nahawakan at hindi tuloy ang bumaksa. Agad na humingi ng tawad si Lota sa kanyang ina. Padawarin po ninyo ako, nanay. Kasalanin ko po kayong tig na kayong madalas. Lota, ngayon alam mo na kung bakit ka naming pinagsasabihan. Dapat kang maging maayos at malinis, hindi lang sa iyong sarili, pati na rin sa iyong kapaligiran. Maaari ka kasing magkasakit o makasakit ng ibang tao. Ang wika ng kanyang ina. Opo, nanay! Ang pahikibing sagot ni Lota. Mula noon, ang batang si Lota ay naging malinis sa kanyang sarili at sa kanyang kapaligiran. Tumutulong na siya sa gawaing bahay at sa paglilinis sa kanilang pamayanan. At dahil dito, pinarangal lang ang kanilang barangay bilang isa sa pinakamalinis na barangay. Masayang masaya si Lota sa pangyayari ngayon!
sa paraang hindi madalas inaasahan ng iba. One good deed deserves another. Hi everyone! Today I'm going to tell you a short story of a special friendship between a dove and an ant. This short story was written by Aesop, a Greek fabulist and storyteller, credited with a number of fables, now collectively known as Aesop's Fables. I am Joseph Paolo F. Klimokosa of Grade 4 Hope. The Ant and the Dove Once upon a time, a very thirsty ant was drinking water from the river. Suddenly, the ant lost his balance and fell into the river water. Help! 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 cried the ant, but no one could hear his cry. A dove sitting on a tree nearby saw the ant was in trouble. She quickly plucked off a leaf from the tree and dropped it in the water. The ant climbed on the leaf and he thanked the dove for saving his life. After a few days, the dove was sitting on a tree and the ant saw a hunter aiming his arrow at the dove. The ant knew his friend, the dove, was in danger. He quickly bit the hunter's leg, and the hunter cried in pain. Ow! 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 The hunter's arrow missed the dove. This time, the ant saved the dove. The dove thanked the ant for saving her life, and they became friends forever. The end. A helping hand is a good hand. Helping a person or an animal in need is a good gesture towards humanity. Helping each other is a good habit that we should learn and apply in our life. I hope you enjoy our story for today. Again, I am Joseph Paolo F. Limacosa of Grade 4 Hope. Saying thank you for listening. Always stay safe and stay healthy. Until next time, bye! The Honest Woodcutter by Deliana Reyes of Bob Gardini. Once upon a time, there lived a poor woodcutter who went to the forest to get woods every day. One day, as he cut away, his axe slipped from his hand and dropped into the nearby river. Oh no! How will I work without my axe? cried the woodcutter. At that moment, the river fairy appeared. The woodcutter was amazed to see her. Hello there, young man. I am the fairy of this river. Is there something wrong? Oh well, my axe has fallen into the river. It is the only source of my food. And then, the river fairy used the magic to create a whirlpool out of which grows a beautiful golden axe. Then the fairy asked, Is this your axe? Oh no, that isn't my axe at all. The river fairy used her magic again. Oh, very well, let me look again. And this time, a silver axe appeared. This one must definitely be yours. Here, take it. I am sorry, but that isn't mine either. The river fairy smiled and used the magic once more. And this time, she finally took out the woodcutter's iron axe. That's it! That is my axe! Oh, thank you, kind fairy! 
I offered you a gold and silver axe, but you were honest and only asked for your own axe. I'm going to give you the golden and silver axes too. And then the honest woodcutter leave happily. A bad woodcutter who was hiding behind a big tree saw and heard everything and grinned. He dropped an iron axe into the same river. A fairy appeared to him and asked, "Is there something wrong?" Oh, good fairy! I dropped my axe in the water. Can you get it for me, please? The fairy used the magic, and the golden axe appeared. And the bad woodcutter's eyes widened as he screamed to go for him. Is this yes, your? Yes, that is my axe. Oh, thank you very much! The bad woodcutter reached out his hands to take the golden axe, but the fairy was unimpressed with his behavior. You horrible, greedy man! You displease me with your dishonesty. I am not going to give you the golden axe, and neither will I find your real axe. The river fairy disappeared and left the bad woodcutter sad and disappointed. He had been too greedy, and now he had lost not only his chance to get a golden axe, but also his own one. The moral of the story: truthfulness brings its own reward. The end. And now we will be having winners from special science class and from regular class. For Grade One SSTS with their advisor Maripel G. Sara. Second place we have Kaab by Ayasha Elise and Baldago Elias. And for the first place we have Duhai Marian Faith E. And for the regular class. We have third place Mendoza Junior Flores from Grade One Green. Advisor Ma'am Joyce Taylor Gall. Second place Albarazin Harry James, Grade One Blue. Advisor Irene Yu Moreno and Kalagayan Chanel D from Grade One Green. Advisor Ma'am Joyce Taylor Gall. First place, Caballo Janela Grace B. From Grade One Gray, Advisor Ma'am Jeanaline M. Amper. And for Grade Two SSTS with their advisor Ma'am Joy Odierno. Third place, we have Diego Abram B. Second place, Selda J. C. Chalmers. And for the winner, Tatahan Almira Bella. For Grade B S S D S, with their advisor Gina Hamero. Second place, Dehuman Margello A. First place, Duay Marvin Orin E. And from Grade Three regular class, second place. We have Nasino Patricia Kate B and Cruz Curly Denise from Grade Three Coconut Advisor Michelle M Abanes. First place, Clarencia Kalil Zion Lance from Grade Three Talisay Advisor Sir Jonathan C Marrero Jr. For SSES with their advisor Mamildred Padilla. For second place we have Bonacua Nathan J. And first place Almonte Calix Johan B. From Grade Four regular class, third place Kadashu Alexander. From Grade Four Love, advisor Miss Nami P. Cabios. Second place. Malayali Shania Bill, Grateful Generosity, Advisor, Ms. Amy Marie B. Cabello. First place, Primacosa Joseph Paolo F. Grateful Hope, 
advisor, Sir Joey O. Abrio. Grade 5 SSDS with our advisor, Ma'am Eileen Jumbo. Second place, Torres Janen Marie D. And for the winner, we have Topasio Deyan Marie P. From grade 5 regular class, third place, Talavera Pianas Sydney C. Grade 5 Gardenia, advisor, J. Gahulin. Second place, Abad Yeshoran L. Five Marigold, advisor, Daisy B. Mendoza. And for the first place, our winner is Reyes Gio Aliana, Grade 5 Gardenia, Advisor Jade Gahulin. All the participants for this storytelling will receive their certificates and all the winners will receive their medals. So we will give your medals to your advisor so that they will be the one who give it to you. And all the families who participated in family reading will also receive their certificates. And now, the highlights of our program, ang pagpapakitaghilas ng mga magagaling at mahubusay ng mga storytellers mula sa ating guru, GPTA President, alumni, at mga official ng ating barangay. Handa na ba kayo? Handang-handa na ba kayo? And now, let us watch first the performance of our very own and talented kinder teacher, not other than Ms. Marielle P. De La Cruz. Isa mo pang palang umaga sa inyo, mga bata. Anda ba kayong makinig sa isang masayang kwento ngayong araw? Oh! Hindi na sumahin niyo ko. Ang pamagat ng istorya natin ngayong araw ay si Pako at si Machi. Isinulat ni Dr. Jose Pilsal. Minsan ay may dalawa magkaibigan. Sila ay si Pako at si Machi. Si Pagong ay mabait at matulungin, ngunit si Machin ay tuso at panabiro. Isang araw, nakakita sila ng isang puno ng sagi at naisipan nilang itong hatiin. Pinoto nila ito sa dalawang bahagi. Natutulong sa amin ni Machi. Dahil ito rin itong tinuha ang taas na parte ng puno na may namumuong bunga at dahon na. Madaling lalaki ang puno ko kasi may maligit na bunga at dahon. Ang sabi nito, walang nagawa si Pagong. Kundi, Pagbigyan na lang ang kaibigan dahil ikas ito makapasensya. Inuwi nito ang ilalim na parte kung saan may natitira pang mga ugat. Ilalagaan niya ito at di naglaon ay nabuhay ito at namunga ng mga sag. Kamusta na ang itinanong yung puno? Tanong ni Pagong Pemanchi. na minsan magkita sila. Natuluan na matay di na doon! Ang sabi ni Machi. Ang sayo! Anong nangyari? <laughs> Nabuhay ang puno ko at namunga ng maraming maraming sabi. Hindi ko nga makuha ang bunga dahil mataas ito. Sagot ni Pagong. Gusto mo? Ang puno, ngunit nasa itaas na ito 
ay ayaw niyang bigyan ng sagi si Pagong. Mutin! Hati tayo sa masagi! Bigyan ang sagi ng iba! Pakiusap ni Pagong. Ayaw nga! Sa akin lang, kulang pa ito! Ang aasar na wika ni Machin. Patuloy si Machin na inuubos ng mga sagi. Si Bagong naman, ay namuha ng mga tinig at itinuso sa puno ng sagi. Naisip nito bigyan ng leksyon ang kasakiman ni Machin. Pagbaba ni Machin ng puno ay natusok ang mga kaanito at mga kamay ng mga tinig. Galit na galit kay Pago at hinanap niya ito. Magpamayas ka sa akin! Sumiluwa mo ba no? Hindi! Pero kaya mo ba ito ko? Ay pagpipilihan kita! Anong gusto mo? Bailing kita ng luso? O itabang sa ilo? Galit na galit na uwi ka ng machin. Hindi ako marunong lumungo, kaibigan. Pag-iusap, huwag mo kong itapang sa ilo. Sagot ni Pagong. Bit-bit ni Machin, si Pagong at itinapong nito sa ilo. Masayang-masaya si Pagong dahil pangalawang tahanan nito ang ilo. Machin! Ha 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 ha! Hindi mo ba alam na ako'y marunong lumamoy? Ang wika ni Pagong palayo sa galit na Machin. Ang sabi nga, matali naman ang Machin ay maiisahan din. Mga bata, nagustuhan niyo ba ang kwento ni Teacher Maria? Mga bata, tandaan ang aral natin sa kwento ni Pagong at ni Machi. Huwag natin kalimutan mahalin ang ating kaibigan at huwag tayong magiging sakit, ha? Nauunawaan ba, mga bata? Hanggang sa muli, magpapaalam na ang inyong diwata. Paalam! Goodbye! And to inspire us with his storytelling, may I call on Mr. Ronald O. Harabello, our SPED teacher.
basket full of corn. He wanted to eat it. So he made a small hole in the basket. He squeezed in through the hole. He ate a lot of corn. He felt full and was very happy. Now, he wanted to come out. He tried to come out through the small hole. He could not. His belly was full. He tried again. But it was of no use. The mouse started crying. It heard the mouse cry and asked, Why are you crying, my friend? The mouse explained, I made a hole and came into the basket to eat the corn. Now, I'm not able to get out through that hole. The rabbit said, Oh, it is because you eat too much. Wait till the belly shrinks. <laughs> the rabbit laughed and went away. The mouse fell the stick. The mouse fell asleep in the basket. The next morning, his belly had shrunk, but he wanted to eat some more corn. He forgot that all about getting out of the basket. So he ate the corn and his belly again, or turned big again. After eating, the mouse remembered that he had to escape. But obviously, he could not. So he thought, Oh, now I will go out tomorrow. The cat now was the next passing by. He smelled the mouse in the basket. He lifted its lid and ate the mouse. That's the end of our story. The moral of the story is greed will cause the pain. Thank you. And next storyteller is none other than our very own Barangay Captain, Honorable Romel B. Sagala. And Riding Hood. A little girl lived in a small house near a forest. Her mother had made her a pretty red cloak. It had a red hood. And the little girl liked it so much, she wore it almost every day. It's so much she wore it every day, so people call her Little Red Riding Hood. On the other side of the forest was another small house. Little Red Riding Hood, my grandmother lived there. One fine day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother said, your grandmother is not very well. Here are some eggs and some butter. Take the basket to her with my love, but be sure not to talk to anyone on the way. It will soon be dark that the wolves come out in the forest. So little red riding hood put on her red cloak. She tied the red hood under her chin, and away she went. Now. The white flowers in the woods were very beautiful. Little Red Riding Hood stopped to look at them. I know, she said. I will take some to grandmother. So she put her basket down and began to pick the flowers. Soon, it began to grow dark. Little Red Riding Hood remembered what her mother said. So she started along the path again. She had just gone a few steps when out jumped a big gray wolf. Where are you going, little girl? Asked the wolf. He spoke very kindly. The little red riding hood thought that he would not hurt her. So she told him she was taking some eggs and some butter to her grandmother. She leaves on the other side of the forest, she said. Aha! Thought 
the world. I know where that is. I shall get there before you. Then he said to Little Red Riding Hood, Well, I had better let you go on. So Little Red Riding Hood went on her way. At the same time, the wolf ran as fast as he could. He took a shortcut through the trees. Soon he was at the grandmother's house. He swept up to the door and knocked. Who is it? Called the grandmother. It is Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf said in a voice that sounded like that like Little Red Riding Hoods. Pull the handle and the latch will go up, the grandmother said. The wall pulled and the latch went up. Then he pushed upon the door, opened the door. He went up to the bed. The old lady lay in a white nightdress and with a cap on her head. The grandmother saw that it was not a little red like wood, but a big gray wolf. She let out of a loud scream. The wolf opened his great mouth to eat her up. But the grandmother jumped, jumped out of bed as fast as an old lady could. She ran out. She ran outside. She ran and ran to the woods in her nightdress and cap. The wolf was very angry that the grandmother had got away, but he didn't have time to think about it. He had to get ready for Little Red Riding Hood. He found one of the grandmother's nightdresses. When he had it on, he looked for a nightcap. He pulled this down over his head. Then he jumped into a bed and pulled the covers up to his chin. It was not long before there was a knock at the door. Who is he? Called the wolf. Now he sounded like the grandmother. It is little red riding hood, said the voice on the other side of the door. Pull the handle and the latch will go up, the wolf said. Oh, grandmother, said little red riding hood as she came in. How are you feeling, feeling today? Ahem, the wolf said, a little better, my dear, a little better. But shut the door well, my little lamb. Then come and sit close beside me. Little Red Riding Hood sat down by the side of the bed. I have taught you some eggs and some butter and flour, she said. She bent over the, head, the bed, but grandmother, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with my child, said the wolf. And what big eyes you have, grandmother, Little Red Riding Hood said. All the better to see you with. And oh, grandmother, what big teeth you have, cried Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to eat you with, cried the wolf. He jumped out of bed toward the Little Red Riding riding Hood. His great mouth was wide open. Little Red Riding Hood ran screaming toward the door. The wolf was right behind her, just as he, he was about to get her. The door flew away. There was the grandmother and a woodcutter. The woodcutter ran across the room towards the wicked wood. With one strike of his axe, he killed him. Then the grandmother held little red riding hood in her arms. She fed her cake and honey. After that, the woodcutter took her home and safe inside the house. Little Red Riding Hood told her mother everything that had happened. Ah, ma! And now for the awarding of certificates with the citation, Republic of the Philippines Department of Education, Region 4A Calabarzon, City Schools Division of Bacoor, of Governor P.F. Espiritu Elementary School of Carapaan to Bacoor City, awards this Certificate of Appreciation to Ma'am Wendy S. Liencia for her invaluable in the story telling during the National Reading Month program. With the team, Bawat bata bumabasa sa kabila ng hapon ng pandemya. Held on November 29, 2021 via Facebook.
Facebook live stream platform. Given this 29th day of November 2021 at Governor PF Espiritu Elementary School. Congratulations. Congratulations. To receive the certificate of appreciation, may I call on Mr. Ronald O. Harabello. Thank you so much everyone. 